Holidays of the Iliac Bay The region of the Iliac Bay has a rich history and not surprisingly a number of holidays unique to it because of its history. The Breton and the Red Guard cultures have many similarities, but just as many distinctions. An analysis of the holidays is one way to study the people. As any school child could tell you, the Red Guards are a relatively new culture to Tamriel. Their arrival from their homeland is actually well recorded, though it occurred several thousand years ago, in the 808th year of the First Era. Hammerfell was a great desert, encompassed by almost impassable mountains, unclaimed and unwanted. Many of the holidays extant in modern Hammerfell seem to be direct translations of older Red Guard festivals before their migration to Tamriel. The orgiastic seasonal celebrations seem unusual in a province with few changes in the weather from month to month. Yet on the 28th of Sun's Dawn, the Red Guards of the Banthan Jungle celebrate Adoros now to relieve the winter tide lethargy. On the 1st of mid year, the people of Abibongora celebrate Drig Rizim in honor of the sun, which no normal Red Guard worships in this day. Similarly, on the 29th of Sun's Height, the festival on the desert called Fiery Night seems almost perverse in such an environment. The Camus Alizari, on the eleventh of the last seed in Sentinel, has been translated as a harvest thanksgiving, though many scholars have suggested that it was once a springtide holiday. Similarly, the Feast of the Tiger and the Bantha on the fourteenth of the last seed was probably once a religious holiday to a tiger god instead of a thanksgiving. Other old Red Guard holidays have either been acknowledged as part of the old culture or adjusted to fit with the climate of Hammerfell. The Serpent's Dance, for example, of Setekalam is patently an old festival honoring a serpent god of the homeland who evidently did not survive the journey to Hammerfell. The significance of the date, the third of a sun's dusk, has been lost with the serpent priests. Baranth Do on the 18th of Evening Star and Chila on the 24th of the same month are both New Year's festivals. Most likely they have been moved from their original dates to correspond with the notion of the year defined in Tamriel. The Bretons have been in Tamriel since before recorded history. Their holidays have remained almost unchanged since primitive times. The new holidays have been created to replace those which have lost popularity. The oldest holidays still observed in High Rock must include Waking Day, the 18th of Morning Star, when the people of the Yeorth Borough Land wake the spirits of nature after the winter, very nearly in the tradition of their more reverential ancestors. Flower Day, held on the 25th of First Seed in the smaller villages of High Rock, is most likely just as older or older. The cult of the flowers is also remembered as guard tide and Tamerlian Point on the first of Rain's Hand. Daggerfall's Day of the Dead on the 13th of Rain's Hand suggests the ancestor worship that marked the Breton religion of antiquity. Finally, the ancient goddess of the moon, Secunda, is remembered in the moon festival in Glenumbra Moors on the 8th of Sun's Dusk just as the nights begin to grow longer. More recently created holidays of High Rock are those like Tibidetha Tiber's Day, celebrated every 24th of mid-year in honor of Alcair's most famous son, Tiber Septum. Likewise, Othrock Tide and the fifth of Sun's Dawn is held in honor of the first and most illustrious Baron of Duinen. In quite extreme contrast, Maruk's Day on the ninth of Second Seed is a solemn holiday, immortalizing the lessons of the equally solemn first era prophet Maruk. My favorite of the modern Breton festivals has to be Mad Pelagius, held in mock honor of the most eccentric of the Septim Emperors. Pelagius was, after all, a prince of Wayrest before he became King of Solitude, and then Emperor of Tambriel. The Bretons liked to boast that it was his time in High Rock that drove him mad.